five and a half million dollars down the drain. Democrats spent at least that much on TV ads. Ads that were trying to get Republican primary voters to pick super conservatives. Greg Lopez for governor, Ron Hanks for U.S. Senate. That strategy backfired. Not only did those candidates lose soundly yesterday, but it made their primary opponents seem more moderate, which could benefit Republicans in November. Here's politics guy Marshall Zollinger. Before running for Senate as a Republican, O'Day actually supported Democrats. Democrats paid millions to promote U.S. Senate candidate Joe O'Day as too moderate. How conservative is Ron Hanks? And candidate Ron Hanks as too conservative. Their hope was to get Hanks through to November, so Democratic Senator Michael Bennett might have an easier election. It was a clear attempt to hijack a primary, and I think it, it backfired in a significant way. Josh Penry is a strategist for the Joe O'Day campaign. He admits the four plus million dollars on campaign ads trying to meddle in the Republican primary made it a closer race than they thought. It was effective. I mean, the, the primary was not competitive four weeks ago, and so it, they definitely succeeded in, you know, in making the, the race more competitive, forcing us to spend more resources. It forced the O'Day campaign to pivot to unaffiliated voters. Former Republican State Representative Rob Whitwer, now unaffiliated, wrote about this tactic in his 2010 book with former Nine News political reporter Adam Schrager. Twelve years later, he points out the Democratic spending may have actually benefited O'Day. They have defined him as the moderate in this race. Uh, before the primary was even over, and it's going to be a problem for them going into November. Now we have a better idea of who Joe O'Day is. Um, so he earned, he got a lot of earned media that he otherwise wouldn't have gotten. Mario Nicholas is a former Republican turned unaffiliated. In a column for the Colorado Sun, he warned about trying to help fringe candidates win on the idea it would be easier for Democrats in November. You know, I think Democrats thought they're going to use a little reverse psychology 101 and the Republican, uh, the Republican elector was too smart for that. And in the case of O'Day, Democrats may have paid for ads that were supposed to work against him yesterday, but for him in November. And they spent tons of money highlighting the fact that Joe had given to Hick and, and Bennett before, and those are all things that will benefit Joe in the general election. This same tactic happened in the governor's race. Two conservative ads for Greg Lopez funded by the Democratic Governors Association. I asked the Democratic Governors Association today about the wasted $1.5 million spent on those ads. The response I got was calling Republican nominee Heidi Ganahl too extreme and radical. So then, Anusha, I asked, if you thought she's too extreme and radical, how come you also didn't pay for ads that said that leading up to the primary, to which I've got no response. All right, so we were just talking about this, right? So the, the candidates at the party pick for the first name that you see on the ballot most of them lost does that mean that that process needs to be revisited I asked that to the people I interviewed today and to, uh, the short answer is it's in state statute how we pick candidates so it would have to be a, a state law change but yeah the, the first name you see on the ballot went through the convention and caucus process and got right. the support from party insiders and when everyone's involved a in this year, they chose widely different than when the, the select few people that help pick candidates. So perhaps it's worth the discussion. Do we need to change the way we pick our candidates? All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Marshall.